Hello, Cubs fans, and welcome to a brand new edition of Cubs on Tap. It's been a hot minute since we've been back, but boys, uh, enough about us. Uh, just quickly, how are you guys doing? I'm Ron Luce, joined by Tyler and Joey. We have a very special guest tonight, in case anybody Sweet. didn't see on the socials. Yes, uh, Justin did. Steele is with us tonight. Uh, we're going to bring him here in just a second. Boys, how are we feeling really quick? before we bring in our, our guest of oh, honor. For man, this I, I'm good, man. I'm excited. Like I was telling you all ago, like, Joey, I feel like I haven't seen you in forever. I think the last time I saw you was, was Chicago. I, I, I've missed, I, yeah. I've missed my, I've missed Joey, man. I've missed you, dude. Uh, but yeah, it, I've been doing great, but uh, I think just like everybody else in the room, man, I'm, I'm excited about tonight. Like you said, we have got a special, special guest on the show tonight. Indeed we do. Joey, how you doing? We were uh, we were concerned you were weren't alive there for a while. The <laughs> hashtag where's Joey is, is still very much in effect here. Why is this always a thing? It's always a thing. Where's Joey? You're the one always getting lost. Tyler, <laughs> we'll, just make a, we'll just make a shirt. Where's Joey? I where's missed you Joey? too, though. Let me just say I missed both of you boys. Um, I'm glad that I made it. Um, I'm excited, dude. Tyler said it. You said it. Uh, I'm excited. We get to talk to Justin Steele. Uh, I was like just quickly trying to scramble, like, do I have everything in order here? What's going on? Um, and then my laptop was dead. So, yeah, I'm excited, man, just to say the least. And it's good to see you boys. Good to talk uh, Cubs baseball with you guys again. Finally. Joey, your, your laptop being dead for sure is the most Joey thing that could have possibly happened it, tonight. Just so you know, it's so on brand, and we just we're so happy that you're you're committed to your brand, Joey. That's all it is. But it's it's not even a bit at this point. It's just so it's no, it, it can't be. There's no way. It's just it's just me. It's, it's just, just me. you. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that, man. But boys, let's get into it. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, our guest of honor, Mr. Justin Steele. Justin, how are you, sir? How's everything going? Uh, out in the beautiful state of Arizona, as you rubbed in with us uh, a little bit pre-show. <laughs> I'm doing good, gentlemen. How are y'all doing? It's good to see y'all, as always. Yes, good to see yeah, you too, good. man. Yeah, we're. Uh, this has been a long time coming. I know I've been I've been bugging you since probably about July uh, no, about dude, getting you, you back on me. the show. So you never bug uh, me. Well, we we appreciate you jumping on with us, man. And hey, I mean, we we've got a ton of questions for you tonight. Um, obviously, uh, we were able to to share those with you ahead of time too, just so uh, just so you knew where our, our brains were at. Absolutely, you know, I maybe. got a I got a ton of answers for y'all. Oh well, we're we're ready, and we'll we'll just dive right in here, man. Because I, I know you know talking to Juice, Juice was able to submit some some questions too. Uh, unfortunately, wasn't able to join us obviously with you here uh -huh. tonight. Uh, actually, he's uh, already in our comment section talking about his uh, fear of missing out right now. So uh, that just goes to show how, how juice is feeling but uh off the bat really was you know what was what was one thing that you were kind of focused on improving you know coming into this off season and it, is it a certain pitch or is it just you know a, an attribute overall like what was it that you were like hey going into this winter i'm focusing on x um here lately i've been putting a lot of focus and emphasis on um, my other offerings other than my uh, fastball and my slider. So I've been really honing in on the change up and two seam my bullpens lately, just trying to work on that third, fourth and fifth offering, you know, to complement the two that I really like throwing. Um, and other than that, it's just, you know, been honing in on commanding all my pitches, both sides of the plate, up and down, you know, just being able to command all my pitches when and where I want to at any given time. So there's been a lot of like sequencing in my bullpens, you know, throw a slider here, throw a slider here, and then put a four here, put a four there. Um, so that's kind of what I've been working on recently. And like I said, just, you know, implementing them, the other pitches, you know, to complement the slider and the fastball. Now, just really quick with those pitches, because I mean, again, I know there was a lot of a lot of talk about you working on that changeup, especially uh, mm -hmm. kind of during the season last year. Was that the one that you're really hoping like, hey, if I can get this honed in, like that's just that's the compliment offering that you want to the fastball and slider or or is it just a you want all of them to be just as equally strong going in? Um, I mean, the, the idea is to have all your pitches be just as good as the other. And that way, you know. In that scenario, the, the hitter definitely doesn't know what's coming if all your pitches are, you know, grading out as good as the other one. But, um, yeah, the idea with the changeup is I have, you know, really good movement on my four seam going into righties. My slider has really good movement going into righties. So the idea right now is to have something soft and going the other way from the hit, uh, the right-handed hitter. 
Um, my two seam does that, but it's still a little, it's just as firm as my four seam. So it goes the other way, but we're looking for something in that like 82 to like 85 range that, you know, something that really pulls the string on them, gets them out in front, ground balls, double plays, that kind of stuff. And that's kind of like what I would want to use it for. And, and just really quick, there, there's going to be a lot of these follow-up questions because you, you keep bringing up good. good answers. But do you think that some of the, the off-season additions and, and moving that has occurred on the roster too, does that play more emphasis? And do you really want to get that change up up, obviously? Now that, I mean, let's, let's just call it what it is. Right up the middle behind you now, you've got a, a trio of gold glove caliber players, you know, mm-hmm. sitting there ready for those, for those changeups to be dribbled over to, you know, that four hole. Yeah. I mean, definitely having the gold gloves behind me, you know, that, that helps out with any, any pitcher, you know, that gives any pitcher a ton of confidence throwing the ball over the plate, knowing if it does get hit, it does get hit hard. You know, I got, I got the guys behind me, you know, to help me out. But um, for me, you know, learning that change up regardless of, everything that's going on going on around me it's, it's still something i really wanted even last year the previous off season i've always wanted to like figure out the change up and like i said you know i, I do so well moving the ball into righties that's kind of just what i naturally do with my arm path and stuff so it's kind of tougher for me to like get that pronation on the change up to make it die and go the other way away from the righty but um it's definitely coming along it's something i've been working on for a while um and i, I really like where it's at right now Heck yeah, love to hear it. Joe, you want to keep uh, the conversation going here? Get a question for us? Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess it's kind of a follow-up, but it was also on our list as well. Um, you know, I know you had mentioned that John Lester had relayed a message to David Ross about, mm-hmm. you know, pounding that fastball low and in, and you really went to that, and you started throwing the slider uh, quite a bit between the two of those pitches. It was like your most heavily used pitches during that span, it seemed like. Yeah. And I guess like when you started talking about the changeup and the two seamer that you've been working on really this, this off season, um, I don't know if you're aware of this, Justin, but from the span of like, I think that post game, when you mentioned that it was like June 6th, right after it was right after that June 5th start. So from June 5th, and I'm not sure if this was like actually the turning point, but from June 5th until your last start, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you had the fourth lowest ERA in baseball among qualified pitchers. And during the season, too, I just just some random stats here. During the season, you had the second highest or only second to Andres Munoz for the most amount of a percentage wise sliders thrown and uh while maintaining such a high strikeout rate. So I guess that was going to be my question. Was there, was there going to be like, in other words, you could still throw a high rate of sliders and you were still maintaining such a high strikeout rate on that pitch on the slider. Uh, My question was going to be like, you know, is there a a, trying to incorporate now that you've got the command down from the fastball and the, I guess, mirroring those two pitches together. Is that something, the reason why you're kind of like looking for, for like a third or fourth offering because those two pitches seem to really take you off uh, as it is. Yeah, with – great question. With the two pitches, the four seam that, you know, has the natural cut and then the slider off of it, I've really gotten to a point where I can like almost manipulate how much it's moving, how much depth it's having. So like when I – with, with what you were asking about, like how I was able how I was able to use it at such a high clip and still get the success, I think it's partly due because I'm able to use it in different fashions. It's still the same pitch, but I'm able to use it in different fashions. You know, if there's a righty up and I'm backdooring it, like that one's not going to be nearly as sharp as the one I'm throwing to his back foot. Because if the one I'm throwing to his back foot, I want it to look like a fastball longer and longer, so he sells out on it and then it darts to his back foot. More movement, later movement. So I think that was kind of the slider question. And um, as far as the changeup goes, you know, I think it's just really important to have an off-speed pitch that's going the other way because I, I throw my sinker still a decent amount still, but it's still like a fastball or whatever. I'm still looking to like something that kind of pulls the string on them. And uh, like I said, you know, gets them out in front, gets those that weak contact ground balls. You know, there's not much damage that can be done, you know, when you have somebody out on their front foot like that. 
Absolutely. And just, just following up too, to, to Joey's question. Cause I, I mean, again, I knew Joey was going to have the stats and, and uh, that's what Joey oh, yeah. does. That's what Joey does best, but kind of building off that too. Right. Because following that June 5th start, again, like Joey said, that's where you really went to cruise control. That's where, you know, you settled in, you started to deal on a regular basis. I, I remember watching your, your start against the Brewers in, uh, in August, you know, from, pretty much behind your guys dugout and just watch you sail through, you know, I think it was 11 strikeouts and six innings. Do you think that June 5th start is when everything started to click or did things start to click a little sooner than that? Uh, dude, I'm so bad with dates. Like I, I don't, <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you the day I debuted. Like I can't tell you like my first strikeout. Like I, I'm so bad with that stuff. Like I, I think, in, in my frame of mind, the way I'm thinking, like, I think it was all coming together the whole entire time. And then it just, there was a point, I would, I don't even know how the season lined up last year, but I would say it was before the all-star break. I forget, I forget like what start it was, but there was like, so, you know, everything kind of came together. And then I just kind of riding that wave of what I would like, what I was building from that start. And then on, I think it was even beginning before that, you know, earlier in the season where I was somewhat struggling and stuff, I just think, you know, the ball wasn't falling my way, however you want to say it, then, you know, things just weren't falling into place. And then once things kind of started falling into place, I caught my groove and I rode that wave, you know, I felt like I showed myself and everyone else, you know, what I can do over a, certain amount of stretch of time and you know the goal in this off season and in this you know seasons moving forward is to span that over 162 180 games you know playoffs world series and all that stuff you know just, it's time to take that what i did over half a season and stretch it over 162 plus absolutely man and and tyler you want to you want to keep our conversation going yeah going yeah uh, yeah justin we've We've heard about it for like the past two years now. All the rule changes coming. All the rule changes coming. You know, whether it's the the larger bases, the pitch clock, uh, the amount of times you can pick off, stuff like that. Uh, how do you think these rule changes will affect you in twenty twenty three? Like, is there is there any type of things you're doing differently as far as preparing preparing this spring? I mean, no, I, I don't know that. Uh my pace of pitches or I don't even know pace of play, however you want to call it for a pitcher. Um, I don't think it'll be, it'll affect me too much. There's definitely scenarios. Um, maybe it's like fourth, fifth, sixth inning, close ball game, um, runners on, you know, I'll, like yeah. in some of them moments, you know, I want to take an extra breath, take extra time to think about what I'm doing because the pitch matters a little bit more than if, you know, mm -hmm. if it was the first inning, nobody on, you know? So in them situations, I, it's going to be interesting to see because like, you know, think of Max Scherzer when he's in the sixth inning, seventh inning, it's a one run ball game run on second and third. And, you know, he wants to take a little bit more time. Like, are we yeah. really, are we really going to tell him he can't? Like, <laughs> it's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting and maybe even a little entertaining too for some Yeah. Things. It's kind of like, you know, you know, it's, it's still a gentleman's game almost. Like, you know, you like, you want, you want the pitcher, you don't want the pitcher rushing to throw something that he doesn't necessarily want to throw. You don't want the hitter, you know, feeling like he's rushed. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's still oh, like yeah. a fine, there's, there's a fine line. Um, but, you know, I commend everybody, you know, for trying to find the fine line to make this game as uh, most enjoyable for sure. to watch as it possibly can be for the fans. So I completely understand everything they're doing. 100%. Joey, you want to deliver that next question? Yeah, I mean, like you said, like the first person that comes to mind is Kenley Jansen with that too, like taking forever out of the bullpen. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. I guess the next question here, I got to go down here a minute. Um, I don't even know where I was. Oh, in 2016, the Cubs rotation always talked about internal competition between starters. And this is a question from Juice, by the way. Um, example, Lester would try to outperform Lackey's last start. You know, Arietta was in the mix and, you know, obviously going through his great stretch and all those guys, et cetera. Kyle Hendricks, does this current Cubs rotation have that comp competitive nature among teammates, or are there any like side bets that that occur between each other that are starting to add to that clubhouse culture or anything like that? Um, 
I wouldn't say any anything like that started going on yet, but I definitely could see that happening. Um, I think the rotation we have right now is extreme, like uber competitive. I think that's uh, some of the main like so I would say that's like the backbone of our team right now. It's just like we're super competitive. We're you know every single game, you know we're trying to win. Every, we're we feel like we can be in every single ball game, one through five in the rotation, one through nine in the lineup. Like that's kind of how we're going about it. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting from everybody. But um, spring hasn't even started yet. So like we're still, you know, finding out the mesh of everything and whatnot. But like at some point, yes, it's going to be like that. Like we're just going to keep trying to one up each other. And I think that's, you know, that just pushes everybody in the rotation and on the team to be great. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. 100%. Of course. Tyler. Yeah, kind of, kind of. I guess it's similar to the rule changes and stuff. Last year they announced everybody's going to get to play everybody this season. Is there a is there a certain stadium, uh, maybe a certain team that you're looking forward to to going to and, and playing? Is there a certain hitter that maybe you've never faced before that that maybe you're excited about facing? Uh, I'm excited. I don't know that we go to Fenway this year, but I'm no. excited to go to Fenway when I do whatever point. Um, I would say that's like the, the biggest one I haven't been to yet. Um, I'm really excited to go to London. I've never been outside of the yeah. U S really. I've been to Canada and the Dominican, but I think going to Europe will be really cool. So oh, I'm yeah. really excited about that. Um, I'm trying to think of some other places. I haven't been to Oakland. I haven't been to uh, the Angels. I haven't been – there's not really many left that I haven't been to, I feel like. I've been to Toronto. I haven't been to – yeah. So you, you've covered a lot. It yeah, sounds- I've covered a lot. Like, we, we, we've played a lot of teams in the past three years. I, I feel like Boston – like, once I check Boston off, that'll yeah. be, like, the last oh, big yeah. one. For sure. Yeah, and, and is there is there a guy that's on the the bucket list right now, like around the league, that you're just like, I want to punch that guy out on three pitches, kind of guy, or is mm-hmm. it just like, a, I'm I'm equal opportunistic and I don't care who we go against. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm equal equal across the board. Um, well, maybe is there, it, is there if, if, if if there was, I don't know that I want to say it because it just adds fuel to their fire. And I, I'm not was, is there is there a guy it. maybe is there a guy maybe from the past that's retired, like maybe that you've never played against maybe somebody from from the 90s or something is there somebody out there like that you would have liked to face uh, yeah i would have liked to face Roger Clemens and i would have been hitting hey that's right cuz you you hit you got to hit off Corbin Burns so yeah i, I, I want to hit i would want to hit off of somebody throwing back then Dude, Pat and Ron were so excited when you got that hit off Kirk Corbin Burns on the radio. <laughs> so I was, excited. I, I was very excited. Did you like? Did you keep the bat? Like, if you kept the bat, like I got, I got the ball still. I got that was like nice. my first like ball that, awesome. that I got stamped and everything. I was fired oh, yeah. up about that one. That's awesome. That's that is awesome. That is incredible. And I guess this kind of builds off it. I'm actually stealing. Unfortunately, you weren't a part of the pitchers panel at CubsCon, uh, but Tyler was able to ask a question. Uh, so I actually stole this one from D- Tyler directly uh, to put on our list. But who is the toughest hitter that you've had to face so far in your big league career? Um, so something or someone that I always refer to when I bring like because I just I get that question a lot just from anybody, family members, cousins, friends, and stuff. I get that question a lot. But somebody I always refer to is Paul Goldschmidt, and it's just because like. If you get him out one way the first time, it's that is like that same way is not going to work the next time. So with Paul Goldschmidt, you're constantly having to adjust what you're doing in the game to him in that game. So I feel like if if there's a hitter in a lineup that you're having to do that to, that's when they like they can change the game single handedly kind of deal. Like uh, uh, so I feel like him because there's definitely moments like. You just throw something to him, like, uh, and he takes it, but it's the most intimidating take you've ever yeah. seen. You're like, you're like, God, if I throw that again, it is being launched. <laughs> <laughs> it's I funny. You somebody and, else, somebody else yeah. on the panel said Paul Goldschmidt, too. It was, it was Keegan. Yeah. No. Keegan said, Keegan yeah. said Paulie Goldschmidt as well. So, 
Um, hey, I mean, understandably so, right? He wasn't uh, he wasn't the MVP for for no reason this past season, so yeah. it it tends to be that way. Joey, you want to hit us with the next one here? Yeah, kind of along those lines of uh, CubsCon. I think this was on the panel as well too. I remember hearing this. Um, if you could trade one of your pitches with someone else's pitch, like a uh, Kyle Hendricks changeup, yeah, for yeah, example, that's, that's that's very easy for me. That's change. Yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I, I would well, keep no. everything I have, I'd keep everything that I have the way it is, but I would take his change up and he can have mine. <laughs> have, have you picked his brain at all of working this in Arizona? Oh, now? Yeah. I know he's oh, yeah. been out Me, there a ton. Yeah, we talk all the time. We're 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 constantly talking, bouncing ideas off one another. He, he's awesome. I can he, imagine I was, like you got you guys ever like go I know we talked about golfing uh at Cubs yeah, we, we, yeah we've golfed out here. We've golfed nice. out here. Uh, we, we went yeah. once this off season. Awesome. Were you were you with him when he golfed the seventy eight that Ian Happ called boring at Cubs Con? <laughs> uh, not at, I didn't golf with him at Cubs Con. He I did golf with him that time. It was like right before Cubs Con, and he he said it was like the first time he had played in nine months, and he yeah. rolled out there and shot like a seventy eight. Yeah, is that what is that what Happ was talking about? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ian yeah. was he, even. He was Ian was me. calling he was him. Playing me. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I shot lot. like a, I shot like a eighty-six or something, like yeah. eighty-seven, maybe something re- like you know. I, I respect it, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, very totally. respectable. But, and, but very he, respectable. he's just, he's just like you know, rolling balls right up to the hole. Nice little one putt, two putt, yeah. getting, getting on the green and regulate, just playing golf, like just doing what he's supposed to do. Yeah. So, so okay, so since you were there, I feel like we have to ask now, right? Because there was the speculation of like how his game is, right? Like Ian's like, oh yeah, he probably you know hits every fairway, hits every green, two putts for par. Is that literally what he does, or like, yeah, yeah. is he like, okay? He's wow. just that he, he, he would have shot a seventy-five or seventy-six. He like tripled the last hole, and it was like something dumb too. Like it was like he shouldn't have tripled it. Like so, he should have like parred the last hole and been at like seventy-five probably. That's crazy. So he, like, that just, that just saying, sounds like typical Kyle Hendricks. That just, I, don't. I, I yeah, feel like, and like that, it was, he was so nonchalant about it too. It's like I can see know. that. Yeah, <laughs> I can. See, I can like, see like I can see like me having my worst day of golf, and here's Kyle just you know just making it look easy, and here you are you know here you know me that just shooting it all over the place, getting mad. And he's just you know that is easy. It's it's very similar to how he pitches. He just goes out there and gets it done. Like it's. Nothing, nothing fancy. He just goes up there and gets the job done. I was gonna say, I wonder, I wonder if that triple at the end of the game was just him being like, "All right, I'm done being out in the yeah. summer heat right now." Like, <laughs> let's just, let's just get out of he here. Probably, you know? He probably just felt bad when he's like, "All right, I don't want to beat everybody by more no. than ten strokes. Let me get seventy eight. That's a good oh, yeah. That is, strikes that me is as great. like the perfect fundamental guy for like every sport. Like perfect fundamentals probably for everything. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah, so dude. jealous, Tyler. You want to hit us with our yeah. Uh, so like on the road, you can't not not counting not counting the Cubs clubhouse. So far in your career, who has the coolest, like nicest visitors clubhouse? Like who has who has like the best spread? Maybe like the food spread. Mm. And the the Philadelphia like, has somebody in their locker room cooking Philly cheesesteaks. They're known around oh, the league. Gosh. Like people that go there, people from Philly. They say that's the best Philly cheesesteak in Philly. Um, like wow. it's the it's the real deal. He just highlighted um, on the schedule. And yeah, so there's like a competition too. Like strength coaches around the league, like we'll try and see how many they can eat. And there's like a record that's like noted and written down or something, and like everybody knows it. Like it was like a four game stand, and somebody housed like seven a day or something. Holy crap. But, but no. yeah, like everybody knows how good their Philly cheesesteaks are. San Diego has really good tacos. Mm. Their their locker room had really, a really good taco guy in there. Um, as far as locker rooms go, locker rooms are tough. Because, I mean, they're all nice. You know, yeah. it's just um, – I don't know. Locker room, locker room is tough. I would say – I enjoy I enjoy going to Miami because I really like the hotel they put us up in. It's on the beach, and nice, it's like a, nice. it's it's almost like a vacation. So it's like a vacation in the middle of the season. Awesome. Um, yeah, the the clubhouse is tough. They're they're all nice. 
Yeah. Do you, do you think that's like a, a an advantage or a disadvantage for the home team when they're like visitors clubhouse is like so nice? Is it like it's going to get you over yeah. overly relaxed or is it like it's like, OK, we're giving them a little competitive advantage here. Like they're they're feeling good. They're going to go out there and play good. Like I think the players look at it as um, who said that Mark Cuban, he owns the Mavericks. He, he said this. He was like, I have the visitors locker room just as nice as the homes locker room because I want people to come here and enjoy playing here. So when they hit free agency, they'll want to come play here. Ah. I, re- I really like that. I think players also think that way. So like if yeah. we go somewhere and say we have a not great experience in the clubhouse or like something's not the way it's supposed to be, I think that kind of like rubs off, like kind of seems like it seeps down from like the organization. So like, I think if, you associate something with an organization like that. It makes you not want to play there. So I think teams do that, sure. like have nice clubhouses so people will want to play there once free agency rolls around. Oh. So. That's what's up. That's intriguing to know, man. I, I, I'm I, intrigued now about the whole Philly cheesesteak thing. Yeah, me too. Oh, no, dude, they're unbelievable. I, I have like one a day. That's amazing. Uh, I don't yeah. – I want I want a shot at this uh, this record though of these strength coaches. Dude, it's something it's something ridiculous. It's like I am, seven and four days or like seven a day. It's something absurd. And they're they're like a big like, it's like a normal Philly cheesesteak. That's, that's awesome. Is he, like, housing them, is he housing them like the Nathan's hot dog challenge or like is it? No no no. It's like I mean you're there all day for the game. Hmm. So like we if we have a seven o'clock game, we're probably getting in the field around two o'clock. So, like, he's just getting there and, like, just, you know, he'll order one, he'll eat it, same thing. Like, you just kind of go about it throughout the day. There's no way you could treat it like the hot dog thing because you, right, would, yeah, fill, you, you, would, you would fill up way too quick. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I was going to say, I want, I, want a, I want a shot at it just because I, I am the reigning uh, hot dog eating champion here at Ontario Sportsnet. Uh, <laughs> I've been challenged and have yet to be defeated. So, you know, we got we to gotta add another notch in the belt. Uh, and I, I love Philly cheesesteaks. So if y'all, if y'all are if y'all are in really. Philly, if y'all are ever in Philly while we're playing there, I'll I will get one from the locker room, bring it out, and hand it to y'all. Nice. Uh, we'll, get, like, we'll just we'll get dugout seats. <laughs> we'll just get dugout seats and yeah, yeah, yeah. like hey, it's Philly cheesesteak. Not not me immediately pulling doing? up the schedule. <laughs> when are they in Philly? <laughs> we won't we won't bring a glove to catch like a foul ball. We'll bring it to catch the cheesesteak. The cheesesteak. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll have it. I'll have it wrapped up in aluminum foil so everything stays inside. There you go. Oh, you're you're a legend. You're an absolute legend. Yeah, and and our buddy Mike Dubs here in the comments. Uh, he wants to. Does that go for the chat as well? <laughs> Everybody else uh, is also intrigued. And, and our boy Jake Booz is. Yeah, he'd be going to Philly just for that. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with him. I I might be finding when you guys are in Philly and ha- making an excuse to be out in Philadelphia that week. So we. Uh, can experience the uh, the cheesecakes here or the cheesesteaks here. Pardon me, cheesecake sounds good too, though. Um, but while we're on on the topic of the game day and, and things like that, is there a weird like ritual or oddity that you have to do the day you pitch? I, I don't, I don't really do anything. I mean, I for me, I literally try to treat it as the most normal day, and then I just try to just go out there and just like play baseball. Um, I, 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 the days I pitch, like I don't listen to music. Uh, I'm like walking around the clubhouse. I'm talking to people. And like, if I'm listening to something, it's usually like a podcast or something because I'm just like interested in what's going on in football, baseball or whatever. Sure. Um, but yeah, I try to treat it like a normal day. I try to talk to everybody. Uh, and then I just try to treat it like a normal day and just, you know, as if I'm just going to the office, getting my work done and playing baseball. You know, that's kind of how I like to treat it. I don't like to add any more pressure than that's already there. Um, yeah, that's kind of, and that's definitely something that's been like adopted. Like it, I didn't, I, I haven't always been that way. Like when I was in high school and coming up to pro bowl, like, you know, I'm sitting in my locker with the headphones in, like listening to music and, you know, trying to get going and stuff. But now, just like with where I'm at and stuff, I like to just like treat it like a normal day. I I I'm always intrigued by that because like I was I was a collegiate athlete. Joey, I know you you played. Tyler, you played too. Like I was a big like getting ready for practice or for a game. I was a big like left then right guy. 
So it was always like left knee mm-hmm. brace, right knee brace, because I was an offensive lineman. So it was left yeah. knee brace, right knee brace, left sock, right sock, left spike, right spike. You know what I mean? Like it was, again, creatures, it's not – Creatures of habit. Exactly, oh, yeah. exactly, exactly. So for sure. Um, oh, yeah. And this is actually, speaking of rituals here, Jake dropping this in the comments, almost perfect timing. So speaking of rituals, what's your warm-up walkout song? Is it something you've changed year to year, or do you stick tired and true like Hendrix in Sweet Emotion? Um, last year, my walk-up song was, uh, God, I think it's called God's Gonna Cut You Down, Johnny Cash. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, I really liked it. I felt like it got me, got me in my zone. Um, the year before was, uh, Gary Trent Jr., um, the Come Together remix. Mm. Gary Trent Jr. and something Clark, Ryan Clark, something mm. like that. Okay. Um, that was my walk-ups on the year before that. Uh, I'm not really, like I said, I'm not, I'm not too big on like getting pumped up anymore and stuff. So the, the God's going to cut you down. I'll probably roll that one back out there again. Oh, this yeah. year. I really liked it. Good one. It treated you pretty yeah. well. So I like that decision. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Tyler, you want to take uh, it? Yeah. yeah. Serious question time now, because I know <laughs> you are big into this. Mm-hmm. What video games are we playing right now? Um, I've been playing Rocket League with my boys back home. Been playing PGA golf. I've been playing okay. NBA NBA 2K. I yeah, da, 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 da. I play uh, when MLB the Show. I always end up downloading MLB the Show and playing MLB Catch the Show it. a little bit. Um, I play a lot. I play a whole big variety of video games. I like to think that I'm like play decently well at all of them. Um, yeah. The one, the main big one right now, I'd say here recently, has probably been NBA 2K. I've been on that grind. Yeah, I hear it's like I hear like it's gotten like a lot more difficult than the last few years. Yeah, I, as far as like shooting and stuff. Two Two K is extremely hard. Like it, you can get on and have the time of your life, or you can get on and like want yes. to punch your monitor. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've I've heard the stories from other guys at work where like they would play the year before, and now something about this year. Like I can hear them. Like we'll we'll play every now and then, and, and they, they tell me I, I broke a controller last night or whatever, and you're like. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, oh, 2K? Yeah. Yeah. 2K can – it's a different level of angry that it can yeah. make you. Uh, <laughs> it's not like that with other video games. It's just 2K for me. Like, hmm. like Rocket League really doesn't get me that mad. But 2K, it's just like sometimes it's just your player just doesn't do what you're telling him to do, it seems like. <laughs> Got you. Right. Kind of to that note, what was, what was it like when you found out that you'd be on, in MLB The Show? Like, what was your emotion like, or what were you feeling like? Um, I think the first one I was in was, like, 2018 or 19 because they had the 40-man roster guys on there. So mm-hmm. that was, like, the first time I kind of experienced it, and it was, it was really cool and stuff. Um, this past MLB The Show was really cool because I got my own 99 card, and I was able to play with it against other people. And, I, like, the, also the uh, – Oh, yeah. The, the the live series card they had of me mm-hmm. was like a 70 it was like a 70 overall or something so it was cool like p- playing my season actually and then going to the game and like i would like go home and like check my rating because i'm like wanting it to go up so i can use oh, it oh because, it, it trust me it it should it needs to go up like yeah <laughs> totally but i but because i wanted i wanted to use him and like level him up and stuff mm-hmm. but i remember that being cool I remember watching a game uh, – well, watching last year you pitched a game. I think it was in San Francisco. And then later that night you were doing a stream and you were playing MLB The Show uh, with – I forget who you were playing with, somebody that does the streaming stuff. But uh, I'm like, that's either. cool. He, he played and now he's pitching as himself. I, yeah. yeah, it's probably uh, Tupac, Tupac Thug Lord. He, he's, on, nice. he's on Twitch. Hmm. So, so, like, when you play, like, you're talking about playing the show, like – when you play, like, do you play like a franchise with the Cubs? Do you, do you play with yourself? Like, do you, do you, do you make yourself like a two way player? And, like, because I mean, obviously, uh, you've got a hit. So, like, do you bump up the hitting stats? And, like, <laughs> you do both ways. I usually do the, uh, the Diamond Dynasty, and then I'm able to use my 99 overall card in that. Oh, yeah. And then that's, um, that's the most addicting thing on there. 
Yeah, and what you end up doing is, you, like last year, you was able to play with like us four could have been in the same game, and we yeah. like rotate pitching innings and yeah. rotate in the lineup. So that's that was definitely the coolest thing to play on there. Gotcha. So like uh, you talking about like streaming and stuff, is that something like you you think you might do more this year? Like maybe something like you do like road trips or something or anything like that. I would love to like have like a streaming thing that I do in the off season because I definitely mm-hmm. have a lot more free time in the off season. During the season, it's hard with traveling, yep. practice, family and stuff. Um, but during the off season, it's something I really would be interested in doing just because like I play the video games anyway. So you might as well, like, why not stream it and let yeah. people watch and, you know, you know, all you're going to do is build a brand. That's the only oh, thing yeah, that, sure. you know, could, that could happen from it. So uh, it's definitely something I've thought about, but it's it's hard to like get all those piece those moving pieces in one spot and like get that up and running off the ground while you're balancing baseball, family, golf, oh, yeah. just everything else you're trying to do as well. Yeah, totally get that. And, and really quick, we actually have got a couple of comments here from the comment section that are right along those lines in terms of the the video games here. Uh, Jake Bouges, what's one legend you want to see added to the show? Barry Bonds. Yes. Mm. I think we're all on the same page with that one. <laughs> all on Bonds. the same page. Uh, and then another one. Back. This is actually from our – this is our, our – this is the – we call him the GOAT of video. Uh, Justin, if you're around tomorrow, we're debuting our CubsCon video, and, and Mr. Brian Lefevre here put it together for us. But he wants to know, have you used MLB The Show to prep for an opponent before? Um, no, I've, I've played MLB the show. Like, uh, like if I have a night game, like I, I'll, I'll play MLB the show, like before I go to the field and play, like, but I've never done it to like actively prep for a, a team. Okay. What happens if you lose against the opponent that you're playing the next day? Do you run it back? Do you play another game? No. Uh, if I'm, if I'm playing a, uh, a game with Diamond Dynasty versus computer, I, I'm usually not losing. If if I'm losing, it's because I'm playing somebody and that's like World Series rank or something. Mm. Damn, I, I had yeah. a pretty good record in Diamond Dynasty, from what I remember. It, it, I didn't have many losses. I feel nice. like I feel like you and you and uh, and Tyler and Brian are gonna all have to talk because they were. You should have seen our Slack channel oh, yeah. earlier, Justin. It was all Diamond Dynasty talk all day we've today been, with throwing, all the guys. <laughs> we've been throwing out ideas like tournaments and stuff, maybe like a battle royale, t- stuff like that. Like uh, we're, just, we're just all excited about it now. Dude, it's fun. It's addicting. It is. It it so is. Like I, I'll play it year-round and just that's all I play. 2K, uh, NBA 2K has it. It's called My Team. Same yeah. thing. It's addicting as hell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cause you get, you just get invested in it, like you're invested yeah, in your yeah. team. And there's people out there that literally invest money into it too. Uh huh. It's crazy. That's why it's hey, it's why it's a good. But business. it is. It's just, it's just addicting. Game, you know? Yeah. <laughs> really quick too. Along, while we're on that topic, still, Mike Dubs wants to know what do you think your overall ratings going to be in this year in the in the show twenty three to I start. I, I don't remember exactly what it was last year. I want to say. It was so like he said 72. he said you were a seventy two last year. Yeah, seventy two. Wow, they did you dirty last year. What's up with that? I'm gonna say 79. I'm, I'm gonna guess 79. That's very what modest. I think that. I th- yes, no, I just, I just, I just, I just think that's what they're gonna put me as. Like, that's fair. I, for for maybe for them, but it, it'll be a diamond. It'll be a diamond yeah. this year. I mean, it's that's happening. what I want. I want yeah. it to be. A, I want to use it. It's I, happening. I, I want to use it. Oh yeah. Yeah, we we got it. We got to get you there, Joe. You wanna wanna take our next question here? Yeah, we we kind of talked about like uh, superstitions and stuff like that, and uh, like, is there a certain meal the night before or day of pitching that you that you prefer, or, like that you have? No, I don't like to uh, eat a whole lot the day I pitch. I keep it light, you know, like a shake or something, something light on the stomach. I don't want my stomach feeling weird or anything. Um, but like, as soon as my start's over, like I pig out, like. Pizza, wings, <laughs> nice. beers, like you know, I'm trying. I'm let, I'm letting it all hang out after my starts over. <laughs> nice, love that. I was gonna say you sound like us when we're usually watching your starts. It's the beer, the pizza, the wings. I'm trying to pitch good so I can join y'all. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
<laughs> It'd be a perfect that. like cub, you need to like join us for Cubs on Tap after dark after one of your starts. Like what that would be unreal. A meal with just Justin Steele. Right, yeah, just, wings and pizza. Oh, and just, I I like crushing it. <laughs> I like that. That'd be idea. Hilarious. <laughs> Oh, that's too funny, man. And, uh, you know, kind of, you know, along the lines, I mean, obviously you'll, you'll be back here in, in Chicago. Um, oh God. I mean, it's crazy to think we're like 90 days away. Uh, yeah. if that right now, uh, from, from opening day, but uh, what is your favorite thing to do in the city of Chicago during the season? Cause obviously, right. You're balancing playing games during the day and, and things like that. Um, for me and Libby, when we have an off day, we like to get a reservation somewhere, go like treat ourselves to a nice dinner, try and like slow down because the season's like there's games every day. It's really fast. It's go, go, go nonstop. And eat, sure. eat, not eat, not for just me, but for Libby and Bo as mm-hmm. well. So like when we have an off day, we like to like get a pick a restaurant out that's like along the river, go have a nice dinner. Um, maybe take awesome. a boat ride or take a boat ride or something, just so, something to like slow down. Um, I would say that's what Libby and I enjoy most doing in Chicago on our spare time is, you know, just finding something to slow down with, you know, get away from the hustle and bustle of everything. Yeah, we definitely all need that. You know, you got to get away, especially with what you do. Like, that's an awesome, I mean, great choice on your part just to do that. Like, now, speaking of, like, we Tyler talked to you a little bit about, like, what Bama would have done if they would have been in the national championship. Mm-hmm. I know when you guys met. Uh, Super Bowl pick, Justin. Who you got? Eagles, Chiefs, and then Just I also win. want. I also want a waste management pick if you got one too. I know you're big into waste management. Yeah, just to win. Um, just to win. I think Eagles will win. I think. I think it's a scenario where. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's either twenty four twenty or twenty seven twenty three. I think it's a scenario where Mahomes is trying to drive to win it, but a field goal won't tie it or win it, so they have to try and score. And mm. I, I think they're I think the Eagles defense is like able to like either intercept it or I think it's gonna come down to that. It's gonna be because the uh, Chiefs need a touchdown. And a field goal won't get it, so they need a touchdown. I don't think they're going to be able to get it. It's going to mm. that's how I feel like that's how I, I see that late in the game happening. Yeah, yeah. And if it does, we're going to be coming to you for all of our gambling advice next season, Justin, because <laughs> right. you clearly have a sixth sense that I don't have when it comes to football betting that I would desperately need. Well, yeah. Justin, those are all of our questions, but we have been getting some questions in the comments here. Do you mind if we rapid fire through just a couple? Yeah, go ahead. Go, we'll ahead. Go, go ahead. All right. Well, we got some good ones. So. You big New Orleans Saints fan, obviously being Absolutely. from from Mississippi. Absolutely. Okay, well you'll appreciate this. So one of our loyal listeners, uh, he's he's a big follower of ours, Mr. Jeremiah. Here he wants to know what are your thoughts on the Sean Payton trade, and he says, bro, Sean is taking all our coaches. Uh, what do you what do you think about the whole Sean Payton ordeal right now with the Saints? I I love Sean Payton. Um, love what he did for New Orleans, him and Drew Brees. That, that that Super Bowl team was amazing. Even what they did after the Super Bowl, you know, we had a lot of good years after that Super Bowl. We were in contention damn near every single year. Peyton and uh, Brees was there. Um, I mean, I think Denver – I think Denver – the Denver Broncos will be better for it. I think they made the right decision in hiring him. I think every team that was in the NFL – that were shopping head coaches should have been trying really hard to get him because he's he's just definitely a special kind of coach. Like he definitely gets the most out of any quarterback that's going to be on Dream. I mean, look at the way he used Taysom Hill. Like, and yeah. you know that's that's pretty special using a guy like that. And like you know around the league, people know Taysom Hill as like a Swiss Army knife because of how Sean Payton used him so well. Um, uh, uh, so I'm a big fan of it. Um, there's no like bad blood or anything for me. Like, you know, he, he retired from new Orleans and now, you know, he's wanting to coach a little bit again. He still has that TV deal for like when he's done with football. Right. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he probably just got the itch to coach again and wants to coach again. So, you know, I love Sean Payton, big fan. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, being from Chicago, even though it, 
envious of, of Sean Payton with the Saints for a long time and how well he was yeah. with that team. Uh, this is from Russell Luce, uh, if you can tell by the last name there, Justin. This is my old man. He wants to know, do you have a win goal for 2023? You know, d- does that record matter to you? I mean, obviously, um, the team's playing well man. behind you if it is, but. Yeah, wins and losses I'm not really focused on. I'm more focused on, like, my hard number goals is, like, 180-plus innings. 30 plus starts, 200 plus strikeouts. Those are my goals that I've set in place for myself this year. Awesome. When I hear that, I hear all star season if, uh, with those kind of goals, too. So, <laughs> certainly Lord, something that we'll, sure. we'll keep an eye on. Um, quickly, tavern style or deep dish pizza? Depends on what I'm doing. If I am watching football, I want tavern style with wings and a beer. If I am eating pizza for dinner, I want the Chicago deep dish style, like as like my entree. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, because it's like way more filling. You know the the tavern style is like you know everybody's grabbing a piece, talking, yep. chatting, you know, talking about the game. That that's it's all about the setting. So is that the is that the spread this Sunday? Tavern style pizza and uh, wings. <sighs> yeah, a lot of alcohol. <laughs> there you go. Hey, that nice. that resonates around here. We have the hashtag crack. Well, speaking of it, didn't I think Tony? I think Tony asked a, a question about that. He sure did. What is your go-to beer? Miller Lite. Mm, nice. Yes, yes. Let's go. Thank you. I, I get Miller I get so Lite. much shit here in Chicago for being a Miller Lite fan versus a Bud Light fan. Ah, oh, I appreciate that. Just my. My go-to drink lately is tequila, though. I've been mm. – Casamigos has really been doing it for me lately as far as mm. tequila goes. The hangover is, you know, very minuscule if you have one. I, I really like that. Awesome. Justin, now knowing you're a tequila fan, we're going to have to get you out in uh, Wrigleyville after a game this summer and uh, <laughs> and do some tequila. Because you can, you can ask these two. Anytime yeah. I tell a story of a night going out, it usually involves it starts tequila. With tequila. It starts it with tequila. tequila. It usually ends with tequila. Wings and pizza. Post game. <laughs> there we go. That sounds, that sounds like a, a match, match made that we need to do. Just two more quick ones here for you, Justin, yeah. and we'll let you get back to, to Libby and Bo. But uh, Jeremiah has another one. He goes, he knows you're a Bama fan. He's a big LSU fan. He wants to know what are your thoughts on LSU. And, we'll just say LSU and Bama, really, uh, for this upcoming season of college football. Um, I'm a, I'm obviously a diehard Bama fan. My dad played football there in 84, so I grew up not really having a choice as to who I wanted to root for. But I also lived in Baton Rouge and did my off-season training in Baton Rouge for a few off-seasons. I love Baton Rouge. One of my favorite college atmospheres, college cities to like go to a game to, tailgate at. Food's amazing, crawfish, boudin balls, you name it. Like it's but baton rouge like is one of my favorite places in the u.s probably and it's solely because of that college atmosphere that you know environment they set every single day um as far as the teams go i think bama will be right back where they were this year and they're going to be in the mix for the national championship i think lsu is going to take another step forward next year as well it seems like at the end of the season last year they really started clicking as a team um it seemed like they really started you know, getting behind uh, Kelly as the head coach and stuff. It seemed kind of wishy-washy there in the beginning of the season. You know, there was some stuff going around there, but it really seemed like at the, towards the end of the season they started getting behind him and, you know, really playing for him and stuff. So I think this year they'll take another step forward. You know, they'll be in that. You know, I, I kind of look at that top tier of the SEC. You got Georgia, Alabama. I mean, even with the country as well, it's like Georgia, Alabama, and then the rest of the SEC is kind of just like looking to upset, upset them any given Saturday. I think that next tier, LSU's at the top of that tier. You got Florida, who, you know, showed some flashes this past year. Tennessee showed some really good flashes this past year. That wide receiver they had, Hyatt, he was a dog. I mean, when they played Bama, like, he was unbelievable to watch. Um but yeah, I see. I see Bama being right where they were last year, being in the mix of the uh, college playoffs, and I see LSU taking another step forward this year. Man, you you've got a. I think you've got a career after baseball if you want to be a college football analyst, because that that's a hell of a breakdown just right off <laughs> right off the top there, like that, man. And uh, hey, one final question here from uh, from our good friend Mike Dubs, and uh, he mentioned that you you recognize him as well. Uh, mm-hmm. He says, hey, have you ever had Portillo's? And if so, what is your go-to? 
Um, I have had Portillo's. The Italian beef's good. Chicago dog's good. Um, fries are good. Yeah, I like Portillo's. Good, good place to eat. You know, it's a, uh, it's like the fast food for Chicago kind of deal. It's like you know, go get you a dog, go get you, a, you know, Italian beef burger. You know, that's kind of how I look at it. It's like fast food Chicago style. And do you do you dip your beef or do you eat it dry? Um, I usually get it and I dip it like myself. Ooh. Like I, okay. I want to dip like, like a like a French dip. That's kind of how say, I yeah. it. Yeah, that's I like you can control the juice on it. I like that. Yeah, like that's that. how I like to do it. I don't I don't want them to do it and me just get a lap full of I don't even know what that juice a jus or whatever that salt yeah. that stuff is called. A jus, yeah. <laughs> no, that it it is messy as hell. I feel that that yeah, I've is. never I've never done the dip method though. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to take that out of your playbook mm-hmm. and try that. Treat, uh, I treat, treat uh, it like a French dip. That's a good idea, man. That's a good idea. Well, Justin, that's all the questions that we had for you, man. We we truly appreciate you joining us. We hope you have a great weekend. Uh, as you mentioned, going to the, you know, enjoy the waste management open. Enjoy obviously being out there in Arizona while the Super Bowl is taking place. Um, and hey, man, we can't wait to follow along all season. And, and I'm sure we'll be in touch with you. We'll uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you a little bit throughout the year as well. So we we appreciate Guys, you joining us today. Man. It's always sure. my Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Man. Always love coming on here. Always love coming on here and shooting the shit with y'all. It's always my pleasure anytime. We appreciate, appreciate it, man. Thank we you, Justin. It. Thank well, we'll, you, definitely, you. we'll definitely be hitting you up, man. Appreciate Absolutely. it so y'all much. Y'all take it easy. Y'all have a good one. You too, you man. Too. Take care. See have you. a good one. All right, everybody. That was the what man a guy. What Justin. a freaking guy, man. He's a legend. He, oh, he's sure. such he's such a beaut. I, I mean, just – so down to earth again. He's one of the boys. I mean, and you know, we're gonna we're gonna have I'm to be honest, with you guys. I had a I had a thought while we were listening to him talk. For everybody that's listening, not only are we gonna be able to see him throwing bullets at Wrigley this summer, this whole season, but I've got this I've got this itch. I've got this I've got this feeling that we're gonna see him. There's this place. There's this little place out west, somewhere. Somewhere where sometimes it's warm, where where the beer flows like a fine wine, and all star caliber players show up from all over the country, showing off their talents two nights in the middle of the year. I'm talking boys, I'm talking Ron, I'm talking Joey, but a little place called Seattle, and that's right. We're gonna see Justin Steele in Seattle this summer. He's going to get his diamond live card from the show. He's going to get a diamond all-star card this year. Book it. That's not a that's not a prediction. That's not a guess. That's a spoiler. That's a spoiler. Mm. Justin Steele is going to be throwing bullets this summer, midsummer classic, Seattle. Book it. I like it. I mean, hey. Uh, we, he was he was sharing his personal you know personal milestones he wants to hit this season and, and if you could throw over 180 innings and strike out over for 200 sure. batters for sure I want to see it I want to you're see it. you're yeah. probably going to Seattle oh, at sure. the midway point for uh, sure so, dude he's man. got the he's got like we've looked at this rotation for I don't know the entire off season and talked about it and all that and I think the pretty much the consensus thought that we've had while looking at it and. It has been – he's got that ace potential out of pretty much anyone out of the, of the rotation, right? Like, oh, he's yeah. the guy with that ceiling that and he, he's saw. So, he's so humble, but he's got that oh, fire. Yeah. He's got that fire, too, though, and we've seen it. Like, oh, yeah. All throughout mm-hmm. last year and the year before. Like, he just – he's a dog, man. He is. Forgot to ask him if he liked Yingling, if he's had that, but that'll be next time. Yeah, well, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what, I – there, we're gonna we're gonna have to find a day. We're gonna have to find a day when Justin's able to, you know, come out after the the game a little bit after the ballpark right. and, uh, hey, you know, wings, wings pizza, and, pizza, and some tequila. Yeah, you know, I mean that that might just have to happen. But uh, just like Dub said here, though, man, he, he's he's one of the boys, and I, I think that's why he's become so beloved right in Chicago yeah. in such a short amount of time. Is you know he is just you know he's. He's the good old Southern boy from Loosedale, Mississippi. He, he, you know, he goes to work. He's humble. He's he's very, you know, laid back. And oh, I mean, yeah. again, I just the interactions that I think everybody had with him at CubsCon this year, 
really cements that. You know, he really does just enjoy being one of the one of the people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, oh, yeah. He, he pitches for the Cubs, but like, you know, he he was able to you know chat with us and we got to talk to him and uh, we we were able to give him a Cubs on Tap T-shirt courtesy uh, of Tyler coming through in the clutch for us at Cubs Con. You know. Uh, it was it was good, man, and it, it, what a legend! I I can't wait. Hopefully, we'll you know maybe we'll be able to get him back on during an off day or something during the season, oh, yeah. uh, and just kind of catch up with him. You know what I mean? And and just see you know how he's doing and, and where things are at. But we'll uh, we'll make sure we do it like early in the day or something. That way, he and Libby yeah. can go get a nice dinner uh, when they're out here in Chicago, as as we heard. But boys, uh, any final thoughts, man? Before we uh, go ahead and start to wrap up for the day. Hey, next week. I believe it's next week. Pitcher and catchers, pitchers and catchers report. February 15th. We are almost here, guys. I'm We're ready now. Here. I can't after, wait. Uh, yeah. After listening to Justin Steele talk about just the, like at the beginning of the show, we didn't even waste any time getting into like the, the nerdy baseball, like science stuff, what he's working on, whatever. And then we got into all the fun stuff. And now I'm just thinking about having so much fun this this summer, mm-hmm. going out to the ballpark with oh, you yeah. guys, Opening and watching day. people, watching the Cubs just kill it this year. And that's my hope. And I'm yeah. just I'm so excited. And we're not even in mid February yet. No, we're damn close though. And and as Dub shares here, he says this is the last week without baseball for the next nine months. Um, we are, we are almost there boys and it's, it's going to be awesome. It really is. And, uh, again, I'm pumped to watch Justin Steele uh, roll through for anybody that didn't know, uh, you know, as the boys have talked about, um, this is the, the, the prized Justin Steele Jersey. We had to break it out for tonight's show. Um, but speaking of, we talked a lot about Cubs con guys, this is going to be my uh, little plug for everybody. Hopefully everybody's sticking around. Um, in the next 24 hours, actually almost 24 hours to the time right now that we were on this live stream, we are dropping the Cubs con video as we shouted out, Brian, he did, he, he's the, he is the media goat. I, t- I Brian, every if Brian, day. Brian is the man. Let's he just say that he is, he is the, the man. man. The Lef- everybody's got La Fever fever over on La tap. Fever, that dude, fever. that dude puts together good work. But he he took all of our crazy content that we put together from CubsCon uh, and put together a pretty awesome montage. There's going to be more clips and things like that following, but we are premiering it. It will premiere right here uh, if you're watching with us on YouTube at 7 p.m. Sh- Central Standard Time or Chicago time uh, on Wednesday. It'll also broadcast on Twitter. And on Facebook as a stream yard uh, right at seven o'clock as well. So it will be on all three platforms for those that are looking for it. And then it'll stick and it'll be on our YouTube channel. And if you were watching along with us tonight on Twitter and you weren't able to get a question in the comments, it's because unfortunately Twitter is weird and they were weird long before the Elon took over and got rid of comments from Twitter. Uh, so if you want to join us in the conversation, we encourage you make sure you head over to YouTube, go to at on tap sports net on YouTube and be able to subscribe. Make sure you hit that little ringer button, a little bell button. So, you know, when we go live and that way you can be a part of the comments uh, when we have great people like Justin Steele on, and, and we're actually in the process, especially with spring training, coming up uh starting to line up some guests we probably will go to hopefully two shows a week um obviously it'll be a rotating cast um Juice will be back. He he is not gone, ladies and gentlemen. He he just had some some business to personal business to take care of this week. Uh, but you'll hear all four of us again. And uh, for for those that have been loyal to Cubs on Tap for a very long time, you will hear a, an old voice coming back into the fold uh, this season as well as our boy Nick Hudson returns. Uh, it's been a long time. Nick and I used to do all those West Coast shows together uh, back in 2019 at like 2:30 in the morning when we were just a podcast and there weren't live streams. Uh, so he, we, there, there's a lot of, uh, you know, the old and the new of Cubs on tap will be a part of the, the gang in 2023. It's going to be awesome. But again, encouraging everybody 7 PM tomorrow, uh, be sure to check out the Cubs con video. It's about five minutes. It's going to be awesome. I'll be in the comments, uh, you know, chatting along with anybody that wants to jump in and, and see what we did. Um, you know, it was guys, we had, we had a lot of fun at Cubs con. <laughs> it was, it was a really wow. good time. Uh, it was well needed. It was a, it was a definitely like a, you know, Friday night was, was get ready. We, we go, we were go, go, go all day Saturday. Um, 
And then we we lived it up and did some team bonding on Saturday night um, at the uh, the old bar at the Sheridan there. So uh, we had a good time. We made a lot of friends, you know. I mean, it was yeah. it was a bender. It was a bender of a weekend. It was a good time. But, uh, boys, I mean, really, uh, as we stand right now, the next big Cubs on tap get-together on the calendar is, is opening day. And it's going to be here before we know it. Like you guys said, pitchers and catchers next week. I am also ready for baseball. Uh, I've I've been literally saying it for the last like four or five days, just amongst people I talk to in general conversation. Um, and we do have we do have the World Baseball Classic coming up too, so that'll we be do. exciting. And we've we got do. you know Say as playing and uh, yeah, a lot of other superstars playing. So check that out too. Nelly V is going to be in there, baby. Nelly V. Nelly v. Don't forget Nelly V. Let Nelly V yeah. swim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm right there with you, boys. It's it's going to be awesome. But, gentlemen, uh, before we get out of here after this honestly awesome episode uh, today, I want to remind everybody once again that Cubs on Tap is one of two official podcasts covering the Cubs for the On Tap Sports Network. Go ahead and check out our friends over at the Dingers podcast. Jake was in the comments with us tonight. Uh, they are at Dinger Cubs on Twitter and on Instagram. Be sure to follow along with them. They've got the new logo out. they got some cool merch coming out as well. Uh, so be able to be sure to support our buddies uh, over there. And again, we're going to be doing a ton of, of cross collaboration with them throughout the season. Uh, and we'll, we'll probably be in the talks with them here coming up in, in February and March now of what that is going to look like uh, when the season approaches. But be sure to check them out as well. Uh, all the boys over there, they do an incredible job. You can follow me at Loose on Tap, at Teddy Freddy 270, at Joey Knows Nothing, even though we think he knows something, uh, and our boy at Juice on Tap as well. Eh, yeah, you know, depends on the day, my friend. But uh, and our boy at Juice on Tap, be sure to follow all of us as well. Um, you know the drill, Bears, Bulls, Blackhawks. We got it all in Cubs fans. We all got friends that like the shitty Southsiders. But guess what? We got some boys that do a good job covering them. Send your friends over to our friends over at Socks on Tap. We've got it all right here at OnTap Sportsnet. Once again, OnTapSportsnet.com, at OnTap Sportsnet on social media. Again, go subscribe to the YouTube and hit that little bell button so you know when we're always going live with all of our great shows. Um, and once again, the OnTap Sports Network, go ahead and check out what's on tap in Chicago sports. Boys, it's always a pleasure. It's awesome getting in front of the program. Justin Steele back on. Uh, Justin Steele now is just one of two Cubs on tap guests to make a second appearance on the show. So he is in elite company right now um, amongst the, uh, the, 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 the prospects and, and players that we've, we've had on the show. And, uh, you know, hopefully that continues to grow and we, we get more of those guys because it's awesome getting to know them. But, boys, uh, what do you say? We do got to hear the only way we know how at Cubs on tap. <sighs> I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time. Justin Steele, see you in Seattle, man. Like and let's it. go Cubbies. Let's go Cubbies. <laughs>